Part 2. God's Justice. Lesson 11. What is justice? Why was justice selected among all of God's qualities considered to be a principle of religion? Number 1. In this study, before anything else, this point must be made clear as to why the great ulama considered justice one of God's qualities to be a principle among the five pillars of religion. God is the knower, alim, powerful, qadir, just, adil, wise, hakim, merciful, rahman, compassionate, rahim, primordial, azali, eternal, abadi, creator, khalik, and sustainer, razak. Why was only justice selected from among all of these and became one of the five pillars of religion? In response to this important question, several points should be noted. A. Among God's qualities, justice is so important that many other qualities return to it because justice in the general extensive sense means putting everything in its place. Here then, Hakim, Razak, Rahman, and Rahim and similar qualities are all dependent upon it. B. Resurrection. Just as we have mentioned is related to divine justice as well as the mission of the Prophet and the responsibility of the Imams. C. At the beginning of Islam, a difference of opinion arose over the issue of the justice of the Creator. A group of the Sunni Muslim, who were called the Asharites, completely denied God's justice. They said that justice and oppression make no sense in relation to God. He is the ruler of the entire created universe. It belongs to him and whatever he does is just. They did not even believe in the intellect's good and evil. They said, our intellect alone cannot distinguish between good and bad, even the goodness of doing good or the evil of opposition, and many such similar errors. Another group of the Sunnis, who were called the Mu'tazilites, and all of the Shiites believe in the principle of justice in relation to the Creator, and they believe that God never commits oppression. In order to separate out these two groups from one, one another, they call the second group the Adliya, in which justice, Adl, as a principle, was the sign of the school, and the first group were called Ker Adliya, meaning other than justice. Shiites were among the Adliya. The Shiites, in order to distinguish their school from that of the other, Adliya, placed imamates as one of the principles as well. Thus, wherever there is a discussion of justice and imamit, there is in reference to the Shiite imami school. D. As the fundamentals of religion are continuous rays of the principles of religion and as the ray of justice of the Creator is extremely effective in human society and the most important base for human society is formed by social justice, the selection or choice of the principle of justice as one of the principles of religion is a means to establish justice in human society and to struggle against any kind of oppression. Just as the entity of essence, qualities of the Creator, the unity of worship of Him, the light and unity of His oneness, a solidification of human society, and the unity of qualities are strengthened. The leadership of the prophets and imams is also inspired by the issue of real leadership in human society. Thus, this principle of justice of the Creator, who rules over the entire world, is a sign of the necessity for justice in all areas of human society. The great created universe is based upon divine justice. Human society will also not remain without it. Number 2. What is justice? Justice contains two varying meanings. A. The extensive meaning of this word, just as we have said, is to put everything in its place. In other words, it is being in balance and equilibrium. This meaning or sense of justice rules over the entire created universe in the galaxies within an atom. In the structure of a human being's existence and all plants and animals, this is what the famous tradition of the Holy Prophet refers to when he says, It is by means of justice that all of the heavens and the earth exist. For example, 
if the power of attraction and repulsion of the earth lose their sense of balance and one of these two is removed or destroyed, the earth will be drawn towards the sun, set on fire and destroyed, or it will leave its circuit and wander in the endless space of the universe until it is destroyed. B. Another meaning of justice is the following individual rights, and the point opposite is oppression, in the sense of taking the rights off someone and giving them exclusively to other, or to take away someone's rights every give them to another. To discriminate in the sense that some people are given their rights and others are not. It is clear that the second meaning is a particular one and the first one is general. It should be noted that both meanings are truthful in relation to God even though the second meaning will be more emphasized here. The meaning of God's justice is not to remove the rights of a person or give the rights of one or another, nor to discriminate between people. He is just in all sense of the word, and the reason or proof of his justice will be mentioned in the next lesson. Operation whether it be the taking away of a person's rights, or by giving the rights of one to another, or wastage, and discrimination does not exist in pure essence of God, he never punishes a person who does good deed, he never encourages a person who does evil, nor no one will be held responsible for the sins of another, he does not burn the wet and dry together. Even if anyone is in terror in a large society other than one person, God separates the accounts of that one person from that of others, and does not punish that person along with sinners. And the fact that the Asherites said, even if God sends all of the prophets to hell and all of the criminals and sinners to heaven, it is not oppression, it is vain babble and baseless. The intellect which is never polluted with superstition and discrimination will not listen to these ugly words. Number 3. The difference between justice and equality. Another important point which should be pointed out in this lesson is that sometimes justice is confused with equality. And it seems that the meaning of justice is that equality should be maintained whereas this is not so. Equality is not a condition for justice, rather rights and priorities must be considered. As an example, justice in a classroom of students is not that they all receive equal grades and justice between two workers is not that they receive equal wages. Rather, justice is in this that each student to be graded according to his knowledge and ability and each worker to be judged according to his work and activity. In the world of nature also, justice in the extensive sense means just this. If the heart of a whale which weighs one ton, he compared to the heart of a sparrow, which is perhaps not more than one gram in weight. If they were equal, there would be no justice, and if the roots of a very tall tree were equal to the roots of a small plant, this is not justice and is equivalent to oppression. Justice is that every creature receives its rights in proportion to its abilities. Think and answer. Number 1. Why among all of the qualities of God is justice known to be or recognized as being one of the principles of religion? Number 2. Who were the Asherites? What do you know about their beliefs? Number 3. What reactions does belief in divine justice have in human society? Number four. How many meanings does justice have? Explain them. Number five. Does justice mean the same as equality? Lesson 12. Prove or reason for the Creator's justice. Number one. Goodness and evil. We have learned, and it seems that this issue is necessary, that our intellect distinguishes between good and evil, to a certain extent. This is that very thing which scholars speak about in ethical terms as goodness and evil. For instance, we know that justice and goodness are good, and oppression and stinginess are evil. 
Before religion even mentions these things, it was clear to us. However, there are other issues which exist which our intelligence is not sufficient to understand, and we must seek guidance from divine leaders and the prophets. Thus, if a group of Muslims in the name of Asharites deny intellectual goodness and evil, and the way of distinguishing between good and evil, to think that only religion brought the issue of justice and oppression and things like this is completely wrong. Because if our intellect does not have the ability to choose between good and evil, how should we know whether or not God would send his message without false prophets? But the moment we say that lying is wrong and evil, and that it is impossible that God would lie, we know that God's promises are always true and then he is always truthful. We would never encourage deceit and never give miracles into the hands of a deceitful person. It is here that we can rely upon what religion in the divine law says. Thus, we can conclude that the belief in intellectual goodness, good and evil, is from religion. Note this with care. Now, let us return to the proof of divine justice. In order to understand this, we must know what is this source of oppression. Number 2. Source of Oppression the source of oppression is one of the following things. A. Ignorance. It sometimes happens that an oppressive person does not, in truth, know what he is doing. He does not know that he is destroying someone's rights and he is not aware of what he is doing. B. Need. Sometimes a person is tempted to undertake a satanic act in order to attain something that another has, whereas if he were self-sufficient in such a situation, he would have no need to commit oppression. C. Inability. Sometimes a person is not willing to have the rights of another curtailed, but he does not have the power or ability to do anything about it, and with that willingness he commits oppression. D. Selfishness bearing grudges and seeking revenge. Sometimes none of these qualities exist, but selfishness causes one to aggress against others, and or the sense of seeking revenge or bearing a grudge makes that person commit oppression or the spirit of exclusiveness and, and monopolization causes injustice to others. But noting that none of these ugly qualities and deficiencies exist in God, because he is the knower of all things, needless of all things, and power over all things, and is kind to all. It makes no sense for him to commit oppression. He is a being who is endless, perfect, and unlimited. Only goodness, justice, and mercy can stem from such a being. If he punishes those who commit evil, in reality it is the result of their deeds which causes this. Just like a person who, as a result of the use of narcotics or alcohol, is afflicted with an incurable disease, the Holy Quran says, You receive but the recompense of what you have earned. Number 3. The Holy Quran and the Justice of the Creator It is important to note that the Holy Quran greatly emphasizes this point. Verily, God will not deal unjustly with men in aught. It is man that wrongs his own soul. And in another place it says, God is never unjust in the least degree. We shall set up scales of justice for the day of judgment, so that not a soul will be dealt with unjustly in the least. Thus, note that what is meant by balance here is the method of weighing good and evil, not, not like scales of this world. Number four. Invitation of justice and equity. We have said that the qualities of a human being must be like a ray of God's qualities in a human society. God's qualities are widespread, according to this principle, to the same extent that the Holy Quran stresses the justice of the Creator. He has also stressed justice and equity in human society as the individuality of individuals. The Holy Quran says that oppression and injustice will destroy society and that the fate of oppressors is of the most painful kind. The Holy Quran, in addition to mentioning the fate of past tribes, has often repeated this truth 
for people to see the result of oppression and corruption and what punishment will be given. Fear that you not suffer such a fate. The Holy Quran clearly states as a principle, God commands justice, the doing of good and liberality to family members, and he forbids all shameful deeds and injustice and rebellion. It should be noted that committing aggression is an ugly act. To accept oppression and suffer suppression is also wrong according to Islam and the Holy Quran. Deal not unjustly and you shall not be dealt with unjustly. In general, submission to inequity and courageous oppression increases suppression and aids oppressors. Think and answer. 1. Can our intellect, independent of the divine law, distinguish between good and evil? Number two, what does oppression stem from? What is the intellectual proof of God's justice? Number three, what does the Holy Quran say about the justice of the Creator and how does it negate oppression from Him? Number four, what is a human being's responsibility in regard to justice and oppression? Number five, is it also a sin to submit to oppression? Lesson 13 The Philosophy of Signs and Evil From the earliest times to the present, a group of the unaware went against God's justice and expressed ideas that either God's justice did not exist or even sometimes they not only negated justice, but used it as a means of proving the non-existence of God, like unexpected catastrophes such as hurricanes, earthquake, and other natural calamities and differences of these types which can be found among people and also calamities and evil which extend to human beings or plants and animals. Number 1. Relative judgment and limited knowledge. Normally, all of us in our judgment and determination of conformations stress the relation things have with us. For instance, we say, such and such is near us or far from us, in other words, in relation to us, or such and such a person is strong or weak, that is, in comparison to our physical ability or spiritual situation. In issues relating to good and evil, the calamities and natural catastrophes, people's judgment is usually the same. For instance, if rain falls in a region, we have nothing to do with what the total effect of the rain were. We only think about our own environment, home or pasture areas, or at the most our own city. If it was a positive event, we say that it was God's blessing, and if negative, we call it a negative event. When they destroy a building in order to build a new one, and when we only share in its dust, we say that it was a bad event, even if in the future a hospital will be built there which everyone can make use of, and even if the rain had positive effects in other parts of the city. In our normal judgments, we consider a snake bite to be a calamity without recognizing the fact that this very bite and poison is effective means of defense for this animal and disregarding the fact that sometimes from this very poison a life-giving medicine is produced which saves the lives of thousands of people. Thus, if we do not want to be misled, we must look at our own limitations and in our judgments. Not only look at things in relation to ourselves, but rather consider all sides of the issues and judge from all points of view. In principles, events in the world are all linked together like a chain. The hurricane which hits our city today and a heavy downpour of rain which brings flood is one of these long links which is completely related to other links and is related also with an event which took place in the past and will take place in the future. The conclusion of the result is that putting one's fingers on only a small part of an issue and judging it accordingly is not to have used one's intellect and logic. That which creation deserves is complete goodness but if something from one point of view is evil, goodness prevails. A surgical operation is discomforting from one point of view, and from another, beneficial. Thus, goodness is relative. For further development and discussion, let us look at the occurrence of an earthquake. 
It is true that in one area destruction occurs, but if we consider its relation to other issues, we can change our opinion. Does an earthquake relate to the temperatures and pressure within the earth, or does it relate to the attractions of the room, attractions of the moon, which continuously draw the earth towards itself, and it sometimes breaks, or does it relate to both? Scientists have different views. But whatever of these exists, the effects upon another thing must be considered. That is, we must know what effect the temperature inside the earth has in creating oil resources, which is the most important energy material in our age and also the creation of coal, etc. Thus, goodness is relative. And also, what effect the ebb and flow of the tides stemming from the pole of the moon and the ocean has upon life within the water and its creatures and often, watering a dry coastline in places where the water meets the ocean, there is also a relative good. It is here that we understand what relative judgments and limited information we have when we, when we look at issues like this as dark points which the attractions of the created world contains, and however much more we look at the relationship between phenomena, we become more aware of its importance. The Holy Quran tells us, Of knowledge, it is only a little that is communicated to you. Number 2. Undesirable Events and Warnings We have all seen people who, when groaned in blessing, fall under the influence of prize and selfishness, and in this state of condition many of the important human issues and duties are forgotten. And also, we have all seen that at the time of the calmness of the oceans of life and complete restfulness how such a state of sleep and forgetfulness is given a person, which, if it continues, will bring great misfortune to that person. Without doubt, some of the undesirable events of life are in order to end the state of pride and to do every and to do away with the sleep and forgetfulness of life. You have most certainly heard that experienced drivers complain about roads which are flat, level and lacking any twists or turns, ups or downs, and they describe these attractive qualities as dangerous ones. Why? Because the monotony of this road causes a driver to fall asleep and it is here that danger comes to him. It has even been seen that some countries have created artificial ups and downs and put holes to prevent such a danger. The path or way of life of a human being is also the same. If life does not have any ups or downs or potholes, and if undesirable events never occur, a state of forgetfulness of God and sleep will come and prevent a person from undertaking his or her duties and responsibilities. We are not imitating that a human being must create undesirable events for himself or herself, or welcome misfortune because calamities have continuously been and will continue to be. Rather, we say that one must be attentive to a part of this philosophy, which is to prevent pride and forgetfulness, because these are enemies and barriers to well-being and happiness. We repeat, this is the philosophy of a part of these undesirable events. Not all of them, because they have other aspects as well, which with the will of God will be mentioned in further lessons. The Holy Quran tells us, When the suffering reached them from us, why then did they not learn humility? Think and answer. Number one. What people have mentioned the issue of calamities and catastrophes in their ideology? Number two, mention some calamities and catastrophes in your own life. Have you ever met up with them? Number three, what is meant by relative judging and total judgment and absolute evil and relative good? Number four, are earthquakes and hurricanes only harmful? Number five, what positive effects can undesirable events have upon one's psyche? Lesson 14. The philosophy of undesirable events in life. We have said that a group of the materialists have 
coercively made use of the issue of unpredictable occurrences of calamities and difficulties which occur in the life of human beings as an excuse to deny the justice of the Creator and sometimes to deny even the existence of God. Now, we will continue the discussion of the previous lesson. Number 3. A human being is nurtured through facing difficulties. We again repeat that we should not create difficulties for ourselves. But at the same time, it often happens that difficulties increase our willpower just like iron, which is straightened when placed in hot smelting pots. In the smelting pot of difficulties, we become experienced and more persevering. War is basically not good, but sometimes a difficult and long war causes the abilities of a nation to blossom and transforms dispersion into unity and quickly makes up for our falling behind. A famous Arab historian says, the blossoming of civilization has appeared throughout history in various parts of the world. It followed a country being attacked by a powerful foreign country being awakened and mobilizing their forces. Of course, reactions to difficulties are not similar among all people and all societies. One group falls into despair, weaknesses, weakness and pessimism and reaches a negative conclusion. But there are individuals who have the right attitude when faced by these difficulties and are stimulated, mobilized by them, begin to move and they, ha and they are filled with excitement and enthusiasm. But because in such situations many people judge by what happens, by what appears on the surface, they only see the bitterness and difficulties and ignore the positive and constructive effects. We do not claim that all bitter events have such effect in a human being, but at least some people are in this way. If you study the life of geniuses of the world, you will see that almost all of them suffer difficulties and great misfortunes. There are fewer people who are raised in comfort and luxury who have shown themselves to be geniuses and who have arisen to a high position. A good commander of a battle of an army is a person who has seen a difficult and long battle. Their economic genius are people who have fallen into difficulties in the economic market. Great politicians are those who have passed through hard and difficult political struggles. In summary, we can say that difficulties and anguishes which human beings bear nurtures them. The Holy Quran says, It may be that you dislike a thing and God brings about through it a great deal of good. Number 4. Difficulties cause one to turn back to God. In the previous discussions, we have seen that little by little our being has a goal or purpose. Our eyes are, are for a purpose, our ears are for a purpose, our heart, brain and nerves each have been created for a purpose. Even our fingertips have a philosophy behind them. Thus, how is it possible that our total being be without a purpose? At the same time, for the completion of this task, one must look every once in a while at one's sin and one's transgressions must be shown or pointed out. In facing difficulties in following God's commands, one becomes familiar with one's ugly and evil deeds and will turn back to God. It is here that a part of the difficulties and unforeseen events are, in reality, divine blessings. The Quran says, Corruption has appeared on land and sea because of the deed that the hands of men have earned, that God may give them a taste of some of their deeds in order that they may turn back from evil. Noting what we have said above, painful events and confirmations of evil and interpreting them as calamities that are considered to be in opposition to divine justice is far from logic and intellectual reasoning because the further we go into this narrow way, we will better understand the various philosophies. Think and answer. Number one, what is the purpose of our creation? How can we reach there? Number two, how is a person strengthened by facing difficulties? Number three, 
Have you ever seen people or read about them in history you have suffered difficulties and developed themselves? What about their lives? Number four. What does the Quran say in relation to our sins? Number five. Which people attain positive results from bitter events and which ones negative results? Lesson 15. Once again, the philosophy of signs and catastrophes. Because of the fact that a discussion about signs, catastrophes, sudden events and unpleasant events is a very difficult and complicated one and is most often discussed in the area of ontology and monotheism, we are obligated to the student to study this issue further from another point of view which is more readily understandable by the, by the general reader. Number 5. Difficulties and ups and downs give spirits to life. Perhaps it is difficult for some people to understand that if life was only filled with blessings, it would lose its value. It has been proven today that if you place an object in the middle of a room, and if you give it a strong uniform light from all directions and the object in the room both be completely smooth, we will not be able to see the object because when shadows are placed next to light, the dimension of the form is made clear and the shadow separates the object from the light, and then we can see it. The value of the gifts of life as well as the weak or strong shadows of difficulties cannot be seen. If throughout life there were no such thing as sickness, the pleasure of health would never have been sensed. Following a night of a high fever, and the morning dawn, when the fever breaks, the memory of such a night when one regains one's health and thinks back on that night of fever and pain, one realizes what a jewel good health is. In general, a uniform kind of life, even the most comfortable kind of life, is tiresome, spiritless, and, and debt-like. It has often been seen that individuals, because of, because of a comfortable life, empty of any kind of difficulties, find it so boring that they attempt to commit suicide or else they continuously complain about their life. You will find no architect with taste who will design the walls of a room, of a large room to be totally smooth and uniform. Rather, he craves curves and lines into it. Why is the world of nature so beautiful? Why is the view of jungles which fills the sides of mountains and streams with twigs and turns among the small and large trees so interesting and attractive? One reason is the lack of uniformity, the order of light and darkness and the coming and going of day and night, which the Holy Quran emphasizes in various verses, has a great effect upon ending any kind of a tiresome life of human beings. Why? Because if the sun continuously be in one place in the sky and uniformly give light to the earth, if its position never changed and night would never come, in addition to the other problems this would have, in a short period of time, all human beings would get tired. It is because of this that we must accept that at least most of the problems caused by unforeseen events give a spirit of life, making it sweet and bearable. It manifests the values of blessings and gives the human being the possibility to benefit from the gifts to the extent possible. Number six. Difficulties one make, one makes for oneself. Another point which we feel it is necessary to mention at the end of this discussion is that many people fall into error in their reckoning of the causes and effects of unforeseen events and the oppression which takes place through the hands of oppressors are considered to be signs of the injustice of the creator of the world and the disorder in the work of humanity is considered to be the fault of disorder in the structure of creation. Just as they sometimes say, why is each stone made to block the way? Why do some earthquakes strike cities and cause little damage but in the rural areas many people are taken as sacrifices and many lose their lives in the fallen refuge of their homes? What kind of justice is this? If calamity is to be divided, why is not divided up equally? Why the edge of sorrowful catastrophes always falls upon the deprived people? Why, in 
contagious diseases these people most often suffer? These are all beside the fact that do not relate to the system of creation and justice of God. These are the results of oppression, exploitation, and colonialism of human beings in relation to one another. If it were not for the fact that the rural people are abased and poverty stricken because of the oppression of the cities, and they were able to build better and stronger homes for themselves like those in the cities, earthquakes would not have such an effect upon them. But when their houses are built of mud or stones or wood, and very little stucco or cement is used in the building of their homes, and in a simple way it is piled on, the top, on top of each other, even the strong wind or a very slight earthquake makes the earth open up. We should not expect the situation to be better than this. But what does this have to do with God? This criticism should be made against the unbalanced situation and erroneous system of society. We must arise and end these injustices to society. We must fight with abasement and poverty and give the deprived their rights so that such phenomena do not appear. If all groups of society have sufficient nourishment, health and treatment, they will be able to face diseases and sicknesses with greater strength and perseverance. But when an erroneous and false social system rules a society in the form of colonialism, one person is given so many possibilities that even their cats and dogs have a doctor, medicine, and receive special, and receive special medical care. But others do not have even the most basic necessities of life and health to care for their children. Such unpleasant scenes are plentiful and are seen by all. Instead of complaining about God in such situations, we should approach ourselves. We have to tell oppression not be oppressive. And we have to tell the oppressed not to bear oppression. We must make efforts so that all individuals of a society have at least the minimum amount of health facilities, food and housing, educational and cultural possibilities. In summary, we should not place the blame for our sins and creation. When did God even impose a system like this upon us? Where has he ever recommended this? Of course, he created us free because our being free is the key to our development and progress. But it is we who misuse our freedom and oppress each other with this oppression then shows itself. And this oppression shows then shows itself and as unevenness in society. But unfortunately, this error has come to include a great many people. The Holy Quran says, Verily, God will not deal unjustly with man in aught. It is man that wrongs his own soul. And now, we end the discussion of signs and catastrophes here. Even though there is still a great deal which could be said, but this brief discussion is sufficient for us in this short study. Think and answer. Number one. Why did the discussion on signs and catastrophes continue for three lessons? Number two. What ill effects does a uniform in monotonous life have? Have you ever seen a person who has a high lifestyle suffer? Number three. What can we summarize? What can we surmise from the light and darkness in the world of creation? Number four. Do all of the difficulties which exist in society relate to creation or are we also responsible? Number five. To do away with social inequalities, does a correct way exist? What duty do we have towards the deprived?